When a muscle is under prolonged tension, areas of constant spasm and muscle tension form within it. They can appear as small areas, these are trigger points, and they can also appear as larger zones. But it can manifest not only in the form of a local spasm area, that is, one that, for example, combines several muscle fibers. And in a certain place, let's say, they, as it were, maintain their constant tension. Here, a trigger point is formed, which causes pain, gives a sensation of tension, and disrupts the function of the muscles. But in the case of prolonged muscle tension, especially when the muscle increases in size, this also happens in cases when the size of the muscle becomes quite large. At the same time, the length of the muscle fibers in the center and on the sides at the edges of the muscle becomes different. Because of this, muscle contraction does not occur evenly. The muscle tenses up unevenly and not all at once. And there appear areas that do not tense up together with the central part of the muscle. That is, the central part of the muscle and this more outer part of the muscle fibers, they begin to tense up at different speeds. They need different amounts of time to tense up and relax. If at the same time the muscle is in a state of constant tension, then in order to make this work of the muscle easier to organize, additional fascial partitions appear in it. So there was a fascia that covered the muscle from above, right here. In addition, because the muscle is hypertrophied and in a state of constant tension, it begins to divide within its own thickness. Additional fascial septa appear within it. That is, the fascia itself, it sort of grows inward here and begins to divide the muscle from the inside into parts. This happens as an adaptive reaction due to the increase in muscle volume. Because it can't all contract at once, Separate parts of it start to work at different times, so to speak. And in order to separate them from each other, the formation of these additional fascial layers occurs, partitions inside the muscle itself. This can be compared to the rectus abdominis muscle. That is, the rectus abdominis has these partitions which actually form the squares on the abs. This is necessary to ensure that each part of the muscle can function independently. Thanks to these fascial, tendon-like partitions, the muscle is able to contract not all at once, but in separate sections. The upper part can contract separately a little, and the lower part can create a bit more force on its own. This allows for a more efficient use of energy when the muscle contracts. The same thing happens in a muscle that is forced to be constantly tense. In order to relieve it at least a little, if it can't relax, a similar formation appears in it. This is what eventually leads to the formation of fibrosis because then, when this process goes far enough, it can lead to this trigger point. It grows into an area of the muscle that is in constant spasm and it can be surrounded by this fibrous tissue. That is, in our muscles, certain areas appear. These are sections surrounded or enclosed in their own fascial sheaths. Such areas are constantly in a state of spasm. This occurs as an adaptive reaction because the nerve that approaches the muscle is responsible for regulating the muscle's function. Depending on the impulse that travels along the nerve, the muscles either contract or relax. But if the muscle is in a constant state of tension, this function is disrupted. Tension relaxation, tension relaxation. So this signal, the impulse that travels along the nerve to the muscle, also gets distorted, and the normal transmission of the impulse from the nerve to the muscle doesn't occur. This also happens very often in cases when the muscle becomes too large. 
That is, for example, with excessive training of some kind. When the volume of the muscle becomes... These fibers that are located on the edges are much longer than those that are in the middle. At the same time, it turns out that if the muscle exceeds a certain volume, that is, if it becomes very large, it can actually generate less force than if it were just a little bit smaller. That is, if the volume is too large for the muscle, if there is too much of a difference between the length of the outer fibers and these inner fibers. In this way, there are two of these pathologies. The first is an area of local spasm. This is the very trigger point or trigger zone. This is a distinct area that is not just located within the muscle, like a typical trigger point. It is enclosed in its own fascial sheath, and it already begins to function autonomously. That is, it can be constantly tense, it can contract or relax when needed, or even when it's not needed. And so, in order to eliminate everything that is already present in the muscle, you need to use two methods of treatment here. There are different methods, for example, shockwave therapy. Shockwave therapy is not so much aimed at eliminating this painful area as it is at destroying these new fascial formations in the muscle itself. That is, to eliminate these adhesions and fibrosis, which are essentially the formation and growth of fascia inside the muscle itself. Also, then they get injured and new adhesions form there. But that's only one part of the treatment. Basically, the same thing can be done with massage. That is, when you massage the muscle, here you eliminate. At the same time, you can directly treat the muscle itself to relax this area and also influence the formation of this fibrosis. There are only two ways to do this. So, in order to eliminate this entire adhesive fibrotic process, massage is used, for example, along the muscle or across the muscle. So, this is some kind of dynamic effect on the muscles. Or, for example, there is an effect with stretching, that is, a certain local part of the muscle is pressed, and at the same time movement occurs, let's say, back and forth. At this time, stretching and tearing of these adhesions also occurs under the fingers. Or you can also do this in movement, dynamically. Yes, that is, in this way. Act on it in transverse. That is, all these movements, specifically massage movements, which occur in dynamic motion, are aimed at eliminating adhesions between the outer fascia, between the neighboring fascia, and between muscles. Because two neighboring muscles, each of them has its own fascia. Here they are located next to each other. Here, too the formation of adhesions can occur. This also prevents the muscle from functioning normally. So this is the first part. Some kind of dynamic effect is usually used to eliminate adhesions, to remove fibrosis either inside the muscle or on the outside. With this kind of effect, you can often even hear a slight crunching sound. Even when inserting a needle into such a muscle, you will also hear this kind of crunch. There are also methods of injection. The dry needling method, where this trigger is destroyed by inserting a needle. All right. But now, when it comes to affecting this very area, all these methods, with the help of massage, eliminate fibrosis, eliminate adhesions, but they do not affect this very tense part itself in any way. To affect this area, the method of ischemic compression is used here. The point of it is that you find this painful spot. You simply press on it without any movement. So, you find it, press, apply pressure, you feel the pain, the pressure continues, you don't let go, and after some time, the pain starts to decrease. So, the point of the pressure is that as a result of pressing on this area, you temporarily stop the full blood flow. Because the small blood vessels here get compressed within the thickness of the muscle itself, blood doesn't flow locally to this area, and due to the lack of oxygen in this spot, it relaxes. So the muscle loses its tone as a result of the temporary lack of blood flow and oxygen. 
and the muscle loses its tone specifically in this local area. So you press, 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 and suddenly the pain goes away. This is exactly a local effect. It's called the ischemic compression method, which is also the fastest way to get rid of this particular area. If you don't combine them, the procedure of eliminating fibrosis itself becomes very painful because you are doing these transverse manipulations and irritating this already painful tense area. That's why you first need to remove this tension so that afterwards you can work on the relaxed muscle normally. If you start massaging your muscles with a ball, also begin with targeted local pressure. That is, first you use the ball to find a painful spot, place it there, press, and wait. The pain keeps diminishing. Tilt slightly to one side, then the other. The pain has more or less gone away. You do this for a few days. Only then do you start making movements dynamically. That is, at first you need to work locally to remove all these tense areas in the muscle. And then, after it has more or less, the muscle tone has improved, and there are no more of these tense areas, you can already start doing something dynamically, working across the muscle. That's how it is.